Okay, laws of logarithms. In your book, you have, as long as b is not equal to zero, so you raise a base to a certain power, you're talking about these logarithms. And so the book gives you all these logs. You basically have three rules for logarithms, okay? The log of a product, if I have two things. Now I'm using a capital N and a capital N because that's the way the book technically does this, okay? So it could be x times y, okay? But if I have a base 2 and I have a log of a product, what this rule, number 1, the first law says the log of a product is the sum of the logs, okay? So this is equal to the sum of the logs, which is the log, the same base, log base 2 of m plus log base 2 of n. Now the reason this is easier is because logarithms in base 10 were used years ago to do a lot of decimal arithmetic. Years ago we didn't have these fancy calculators. We didn't even have a basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division calculator. What we had was we had tables of logarithms. When we wanted to divide two huge decimal numbers in science class, we used logarithm tables. And because we wanted to multiply two big decimal numbers, which nobody in their right mind would like to do by hand, right? At least I didn't. And the only time I ever bought a calculator in college was when I was taking physics. Okay, because you're working with a lot of decimal numbers. So when you're working with decimal numbers, a lot of times what you need is these laws of logarithms so that you can actually take, and it's easier to add two decimal numbers, isn't it, than to multiply them? So what we used to do is, and we were always in log base 10. So log base 10 of m times n. Well, if I had m equal to 0 0.0, oh, I hate that when it does that, 0 0.0, come on here, let's get this thing out of here. Okay, I think I can do it now. Point, <laughs> okay. I'm trying to get this silly thing. Point zero two seven eight, and I had n equal to uh, three point. I'm making this up. Uh, five six two zero. Um, let's add some more numbers here. Point zero two seven eight one nine. Okay. Would you like to take those two decimal numbers and multiply them by hand? Probably not. I bet if I asked you, you'd all raise your hand and say, "No, I don't want to do that." Right? Okay. And, but that's exactly what we used to have to do. So to multiply two long decimal numbers like this, what we did was we took the log of both numbers and we added the logs. Because I can add the logs of the two numbers. And what we do is we'd look up in our log base 10 chart, we would look up the log of m, we'd look up the log of this number, we'd look up the log of this number, and then we would add them together. And then we would do what was called it, take the anti-log, which if you remember from your trig tables, which you don't use a calculator, so you don't use tables anymore, was you looked up in the columns, you found that number, and then you went back to find the actual number that it was. And that's exactly how we did those things. So that was really the purpose of the logarithms in, in base 10. Okay, so it was a real easy way. This, this actually gives us a real easy way to break these down. So whenever I have the product of two things and the log of a product, and it doesn't matter if your product Let's say I had the log of 16. What's 16 but 4 times 4? 2 times 8. So if I wanted to say the log of base 2 of 16, okay, I could say that's the same as the log base 2 of 4 times 4, right? Or 2 times 8, okay? So in this case, this is equal to this. It's also equal to the log base 2 of 8 times 2, right? Because 16 is just 8 times 2, or 4 times 4. Um, and so I've got two different ways of writing it. So what I can do is I can say, well, that's the same as the log base 2. If I use this one right here, okay, let's use the 8 times 2 log base 2 of 8 
plus the log base 2 of 4. Well, I know that the log base 2 of 4 is 2 squared is equal to 4. 2 to the third, well, this must be equal. Log base 2 of 16 must be 5, right? Okay, and log 2 to the fifth is 16. Okay? Makes sense, right? So that's, that's the first log uh, rule, law, that you'll have to know. Okay? The second one, now we have the log of a product, which means the multiplication of two things. Now we have the log of a quotient, which my uh, little um, thingy here should be a fraction bar, and it slid up because I put some spaces in there. Okay, so the log of a quotient means if I have the quotient, what I have to do is I have to take the difference of the logs. So if I have log base 2 of, um, let's say, 40, okay, that's the same as the log base 2 of what? Um, 40 is 80 divided by 2. I mean, I can write it this way, right? Well, if I had two numbers divided by each other, I could sep say, well, that's the same as the difference of the log. So I take the log of the numerator, log base 2 of 80, minus the log base 2 of 2. Okay, log base 2 of 2, log base anything of itself is 1, right? Because 2 to the 1 is equal to 2. Okay? It's just a, a, a way to exactly just show you what you can do with when you have two numbers that are quotients. Okay, so when I go over the worksheet, we'll actually do something like this. And then we're going to combine all these laws. All right, so um, the last law, the third one, is the law of a power. If I take the log of something raised to the power, this is the same thing as bringing the power down times the log base 10 of n, okay? So you can bring that down in front, okay? Now, some examples of how to work with these. Let's take some examples off your sheet. Does anybody have any questions so far? Okay, I'm going to take some examples off the worksheet that I just gave you. I'll talk about that in a minute, okay? So, the log, until you knew all three of these laws, you couldn't do any of these, okay? So the log base 2 of m to the 4th, n to the 3rd. Now the first thing they ask you today is say express this in terms of the log base 2 of m and the log base 2 of n. That's what the directions say. So I can't have the log base 2 of m n of this product. So I have to separate it, right? Well, first think about the product. Don't worry about the powers yet. Here we have a product, okay? So this is equal to the log base 2 of m to the fourth plus, because my logs of a product is the sum of the logs, log base 2 of n to the third, right? So I've broken up the product into, into two logs and the sum of two logs. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to worry about the powers. Well, my last law up here, law number three, said that the log of a power is the product of the power and the log. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this four and this three, and I'm going to bring it out front of the individual logs. So this is four times the log base two of m plus 3 times the log base 2 of n. So now I have done what the directions have told me to do, which was express this compound log here in terms of the log of m and the log of n. Okay? So I have the log base 2 of m, log base 2 of n, and that's exactly how you do those. Okay? Now, Let's do a second one, log base 2 of mn cubed, and this is a product, log base 2 of the product of mn cubed. Now I have to, now I can't worry about the product yet, I have to worry about that power because of those parentheses. 
Okay, so the first thing I have to do is I have to worry about the power. So if I bring the power down front with my third law, okay, I have 3 times the log base 2 of mn, right? Well, now I have this product going on right here, so I can separate that into this whole thing right here itself gets separated into the log base 2 of m plus the log base 2 of n, right? And then I just have 3 out in front of that. Now, the, why the parentheses are there is because I have to do things in the order that I have to do them. The first thing I have to do, if this whole thing is raised to a power, I have to get that 3 out there. Then I have to remember that I'm going to replace the log of that product by the sum of the logs. And that's why I put parentheses around the whole thing. Okay? Um, the next one, log base, uh, log base 2 of m times the cubed root of n. All right. Now remember, these are all exponentials. So we have to write them in exponential terms. So this is a product. This is an m times an n. Now the n is raised to some power, right? Do you know what power it's raised to? It's a cube root, one third, right? So the n is being raised to the one third power. The m is to the one power. So I'm going to separate this as the log base 2 of m plus, now I have the log base 2 of n to the 1 third, right? But I can bring that 1 third out front because it's being raised to the 1 third power. Do you understand or should I break it up? Let me break it up? Yeah. Okay. Plus the log base 2 of n to the 1 third. Okay? Now I'm not completely done because they want log base 2 of n, not n to the one third. So now I'm going to bring the one third out, out in front of just this log, not the whole thing. So log base 2 of m plus one third times the log base 2 of n. And now I've done what the directions told me to do. I've got it in terms of log base 2 of m and n separately. Okay? Now when we do these, we're going to actually put them back together. Okay? So let's do another one. The log base 2 of the square root of m cubed n. Okay? Take whatever you have in that, in that m, the square root of m cubed n, and put it in exponential form first. Okay, that's your first step. So this is the same as the log base 2 of m to the 3 halves. Remember, the, the power goes on the numerator, the index goes on the denominator. So it's 3 halves n to the 1 half. Okay? Now I have the product of two things raised to a power. Are you starting to understand these? Okay, so now I'm going to split it up into, and you don't have to do every step like I'm doing. Pretty soon you'll be able to do them really fast. So the log base 2 of m to the 3 halves plus the log base 2 of n to the 1 half. So I split them up by the product law, and now I'm going to use the power law and I'm going to bring the powers down in front. 3 halves log m plus 1 half log ba oh, it's base 2, sorry, of n. Okay? Do I need to do more of this set to understand them? Bethany's saying yes, I do. Okay. All right, log base 2 of m to the 5th over n to the 6th. Now what's going on here? I've got some powers and I have a quotient, right? So I've got to use that second law. Remember, 
when you have a product or a quotient, you have to use those laws first. You're undoing this. So it's backwards from what you think of your order of operations. So this is the log, and remember it's the difference of the numerator log minus the denominator log, okay? Log base 2 of m to the fifth minus the log base 2 of n to the sixth. Now that I've separated that quotient out, now I can bring the powers down. So I bring the 5 down in front of this one, 5 log base 2 of m minus, bring the power down in front, 6 log base 2 of n. Okay? Let's do a quotient raised to a power is the next one. Log base 2 of the quantity n over m raised to the fourth. In this case, I can't do the product rule first. I have to do the exponents first, right? Does that make sense to you, why I'm doing the exponent first? I could do the product first if I already went and wrote, raised that to the fourth power, each the n and the m. Then I could do the, the quotient rule first. But in this case, I can just say that this is 4 times the log base 2 of n over m. And that's where the parentheses come. And I'll show you another way of doing this. I'll show you how you do the product rule first, but you have to, you have to change that thing first. So this is equal to 4 times what? Well, what am I going to substitute for this log of n over m is I'm going to substitute now a, a difference of log base 2 of n minus the log base 2 of m. And that's why the 4 is outside of the parentheses and I need to put those in. Now if I had taken this, show you another way of doing the same exact problem, log base 2 of n over m to the 4th, I could have said that this is the same thing as the log base 2 of n to the 4th over m to the 4th. Same exact thing, right? All I did was raise everything in there to the fourth power. So use your laws of exponents first. And now I have the log base 2 of n to the fourth minus the log base 2 of m to the fourth. Okay? Now I can bring my fours out front here, and I have four times the log base 2 of n minus 4 times the log base 2 of m. And basically these are the same thing. The only difference is in the top one the 4 is factored out and the bottom the 4 is not. Okay? So I could take this one and factor that 4 out and say 4 times what? The log base 2 of n minus log base 2 of m. So now they are exactly alike, this one and this one. Okay? Yes, Michael? How are they actually supposed to be written? Back it out or not? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They just said write it in terms of the log of m and n, separated, okay? Now, number eight. Let me do number eight because it's a, okay, try one. Um, num log base two. Uh, the cubed root of m over n to the fourth. Just like before, I'm going to write whatever that is over there that I'm taking the log of in exponential form. Change it to m and n to exponents, right? What's my index? My index is 3, so that's the denominator of both exponents. Okay? The index of your log, whether it's whatever it is out here, is your denominator of your exponent. Okay, so this is equal to the log base 2 of m to the what? One third, okay, times, now you're not dividing now because now I'm going to multiply by n to the what? Minus 4 because it's on the denominator, so that's a, if I want to put it to the numerator, it's minus 4 thirds. Okay. What is that confusing? Not yet. 
Not yet, because I have to separate this. Now I have the product of two things raised to the power. So I have to do the product rule and the power rule. Right? So this is equal to log base 2 of m to the 1 third plus the log base 2 of n to the minus 4 thirds which then I can bring the powers out and I say 1 third log base 2 of m now I'm going to have minus 4 thirds log base 2 of n okay Does anybody have any questions how to do these? Okay, that's the first set. That's 1 through 8, right? Then they say express as a single logarithm. Now the next set on the other side of the page takes these and puts them back together as what you started out with. Am I going too fast or you just slow down? You got it all? You okay? Okay, so now I'm going to take them and I'm going to take them and put them back together again. So number nine says, as soon as I get the clear board here, two times the log base two of m plus four times the log base two of n. When you have a constant in front of the log, it's going to go as a power of the thing that you're taking the log of. So in other words, if I want to rewrite this, I take this 2 and I'm going to put it as a power up here of the m. So this one gets written as the log base 2 of m squared. Right? Now don't worry, I'm going to do it step by step so you can see what I'm doing. Eventually you'll just be able to do these without doing step by step. Now I'm going to take this 4, the 4 is the power of the n. So now I'm going to rewrite this as log base 2 of n to the 4th. Okay? Because I'm adding two logs that have the same bases, I can just say that's the log of the product. So they work backwards. So this is equal to the log base 2 of the product of these two things right here. So this is log base 2 of m squared n to the 4th, okay? It's just going backwards. So you can move these back and forth whichever way you need them. Got it? Okay, so if I go on, um, log base 5 of n minus 3 times the log base 5 of n, whatever n is. I've got subtraction, and I've also got a power. So this 3 right here has to go up first, okay? And then I'm going to, sub I have subtraction, so that means I've got a quotient. Do you have a question, Jared? It's not an n, it's a power. I'm sorry, which one's the m? I'm sorry, the last one. Thank you. This one's m, sorry. Okay, so the 3 is going to come up and be the exponent of the m. So now this one stays the same, but I'm going to have subtraction implies a quotient. So this is a quotient, implies that I'm going to have a quotient of something, right? And it's a log base 5 of a quotient. Well, I'm going to put this one on the top, n, okay? And I didn't split this one up because I'm running out of time. But if the 3 goes up here, I'm going to have it over the m to the third, okay? All right, next is, wait, how do you what? Know? 
it's always, if you have subtraction, it's the one, it's the first one, the subtrahend goes on the bottom. This is called the subtrahend. Okay? Remember when you added and subtracted A minus B equals C? This was called the add n. Probably didn't learn your vocabulary. This was called the subtrahend, and this was called the difference. If you didn't learn those, now you know them. Okay? Add n minus your subtrahend is equal to your difference. That was arithmetic in elementary school. Okay? So the subtrahend always goes on the bottom. Okay? Let me, let me do another one. Okay. Now, 1 through 14. Um, I did want to get, how much time do I have? Six minutes. Okay. So basically, 9 through 14 are just putting them back together again. 15 through 26 are a little different. Now they're going to give you something. They're going to say the log phase 10 of 4. Now here's where they're, they're going to, is 0 0.60. And that the log phase 10 of 3 is equal to 0 0.48. Okay? This is our given information. It's for every one of these problems. What you have to do is log base 10 of 12. Everything in here is in log base 10 in this section. Log base 10 of 12. I have to write 12 as either a product or a power or a, or a subtraction of 4 and 3. How am I going to do it? 12 is what? 3 times 4, isn't it? Okay. So the log base 10 of 12 is the same thing as the log base 10 of 3 times 4, right? Well, I have the product. The log of a product is the sum of the logs, right? So this is equal to the log base 10 of 3 plus the log base 10 of 4. Well, now all I have to do is substitute in log base 10 of 3 is 0 0.48 plus log base 10 of 4 is 0 0.60, okay, and you get equal to 1.08 for your answer. So these you're going to get numeric answers for because you've already been told, okay. So now, for instance, log base 10 of 16, well, that can be 4 squared, 4 raised to the second power. Oops, log base 10 of 16 is equal to log base 10 of 4 squared, which is equal to 2 times the log base 10 of 4, which is equal to 2 times what? Well, the log base 10 of 4 was given to you as 0 0.60. So this is equal to 1.20. And they want these to two decimal places. <coughs> okay? KG, you look confused. Um, no? So every one of these on 15 through 26 are some combination of 3 and 4, either 3 raised to a power, 4 raised to a power, the product of the two, or 1 raised to a power times the 1 raised to another power. So all you really have to decide is, like root 3 is 3 to the 1 third. That's 1 third times log base 10 to 3. Okay. Um, 2 is 4 to the 1 half power, isn't it? I'm looking at number 20. Log base 10 to 2. 2 is 4 to the 1 half, which is the square root of 4. Okay. Log base 10 to the 1 third. That's 3 to the minus 1. Do you see? Log base 10 to 3 to the minus what are you confused? Okay. I didn't want to wait a minute, I want to go back. Okay. All right, let me do some more. I, I've got those things on there, right? Log base ten of root three is equal to the log base ten of three to the one half. And if the square root of something is there anything to the one half? which is equal to 1 half log base 10 of 3. Well, we were told what the log base 10 of 3 was. 
it's 0.48. So we're going to take half of that and we get 0 0.24. Okay? You see what I'm doing? Jared sees it. Do you understand now, Bethany, what I'm doing? Megan? You good? Okay. Is there any questions on that? Let's take number 26, log base 10 of the square root of 3 over 4. Log base 10, square root of 3 over 4. Well, this is equal to what? This is the log base 10 of 3 to the 1 half, positive 1 half because it's on the numerator, but the 4 times 4 to the negative 1 half because it's on the denominator. Okay? You see? Everybody see why 4 is to the minus 1 half? Okay. Well, this is 1 half times the log base 10 of 3 plus, or actually minus, sorry, minus. Why is it minus? Because I got the minus 1 half and bring it down. Even though it's a product here, I have the minus 1 half in front. Log base 10 of 4. Well, I just take half of the log base 10 of 3, which is 0.48. Half of that is 0.24, right? So I got 0.24 minus half of the log base 10 of 4, which was 0 0.60, so I got minus 0 0.30, okay? Which is minus what? 0 0.06, right? Did I go too fast? Okay, now, what are you going to do for homework? Does everybody understand these? Okay, for homework. It's in your book, but I rewrote out the laws on the paper and gave you the answer sheet. Okay, so everybody take one of these, send some back. Just write your answer on this. And the, the problems are in the book, but if you don't have them, if you don't take your book home, you got everything you need.